excellent hands and uh, you know, obviously he's made some really good catches, really dependable, and he's he's got a, a tough physical nature, so that's always a benefit. Who, what other receiver has kind of stuck out to you? Um, maybe that's come in brand new or uh, from last year, just their improvement from last year to this year? Well, I think Mitch has improved. Jordan Leslie has really uh, stepped up and has played a part. Uh, we know that Devon can track the deep ball really well. Uh, got to get him squ squared away on some of the underneath things. and. Uh, uh, Kirk Henderson has had a solid camp, so I, th I just think overall, you know, we've done well. Obviously, Jurgensen, Mitchell Jurgensen, the twin, has really stepped up, and to me, Trey Dye, uh, he has a ton of talent. So, excuse me. So we feel pretty good about uh, about the whole core. Bronco, Bronco talked about Trey. Said, well, while sometimes you have to put him in the right place, as soon as he gets the ball, he can do some special things. Do you do you anticipate him maybe being more part of things than maybe you originally had thought? Um, yeah, I mean, we, to, to be quite honest with you, you know, I didn't never uh, had a chance to really see him at receiver because he played more as a, uh, as a tail in, uh, in high school. He's obviously had some on the job training with his dad, uh, who's done a really good job with him, but uh, he's dynamic with the ball. He's a freshman. So, I mean, he's been here, you know, 10 days as far as practice. We don't think he's going to know everything. So we'll live with the mistakes, but the, uh, the potential is there. And, you can't coach playmakers. That's God given, and uh, I like to take all the credit for that. But uh, <laughs> you know, that's what he does well. You're down a couple of guys now. Talk about how you're able to work with your depth, and how is that going to be productive for you as the season goes on? You know, it's like it's like anything else. It's, it's gradual. We uh, we're managing the reps, which uh, we I think we still have pretty good depth. We got to move some people around here and there. Uh, which makes us more versatile. So, it's, you know, losing Nick, um, obviously he was having an outstanding camp, so I'm more upset for him than I am uh, as far as the guys. I mean, somebody's just got to come on and step up, and we'll, we'll be okay depth-wise. I'm not, I'm not losing sleep right now. I feel pretty good. Now lose another one, and I may not sleep too well. So <laughs> and let's just keep it at one, and we'll be okay. You guys look a lot different this year. This this crew that you're running sure has turned over a lot from this year to last. Will you talk about the the difference that you see this year from last? Well, I think obviously we're we're able to stretch the field a little bit more than what we did in the past. I, I think uh, that's obvious. I think we're a lot deeper. You know, we we probably consistently could play four deep last year, and it took its toll on us. Um, we just have more playmakers. Out there now, it's just up to us to figure out how we're going to get in the ball and, you know, get certain guys in space, get other guys down the field. It's a good problem to have. I saw Kurtz out there today um, in full uniform. Is that something he was asked to do, or did he do that on his own? Well, regardless if you're hurt or not, you dress out. Uh, he's going to have uh, a screw uh, inserted into his foot tomorrow. And then, uh, you know, he's been at every meeting doing everything, and that's what good players do. You know, you, you don't ever want to, he's going to lose it physically, but you want to keep him tuned mentally, which is a big part of his game. So, timetable still six to eight weeks, even with getting the screw in his foot? You know, I, I guess, uh, I don't know. I mean, it depends on, I have a screw in my foot, and, you know, sometimes they take a lot less, and sometimes they go a little longer. Let's say if we all get together and pray on it, maybe we can get it down to three weeks and <laughs> see what happens from there. With all the, the running that you guys do and all the new guys you have, especially the Leslie's and the Kurtz's of the world, um, how do you feel about off the ball, away from the ball, run blocking? How is how is that looking to you? We're going to be run blockers. I mean, that's something that we demand is a certain physicality. And uh, if, if you don't block, you don't play. I mean, and if you want to play in the NFL, you better run block. I mean, the, the players that they want is the complete player. Anybody can be a one-dimensional guy. Uh, the more versatility you have, the uh, more in demand you are. So I'm not, you know, run blocking to me, it, it's not, uh, it is more or less your determination, your desire to do so. You can't make anybody do what they want to do, but the bench motivates a lot of people. And so you, you're going you're gonna to get after it. And uh, that's my nature, and so I expect them to be the same. Coach, I like following you on Twitter, especially when you get a little loose. Will you talk about uh, the P5 autonomy? And your thoughts on the separation that's taking place between the haves and the have-nots? It's really interesting to me. Um, you know, obviously college sports, and I'm, I'm not a rocket scientist. You know, Tom and Bronco, all those guys know a lot more. But, you know, when, you, when you're talking about uh, the cost of attendance and all these different factors, and then you say, hey, we're going to make our own rules. 
Um, you know, I was in the Southeastern Conference. I'm anxious to see their rules uh, as far as what a, what a player can do. And now you're starting to separate what's more important. Is education more important or is it about athletics? And, and I think there's a fine line. I want to see every player taken care of. Obviously, we all know that, you know, some schools make millions of dollars. And, and, but what is a trade-off for a great education? You know, I, I think you're on a slippery slope uh, to, to uh, quote Mark Cuban about the whole uh, L.A. Clipper deal. I mean, you, you got to be really careful in what you do. Because once you, once you go out, you can't come back. And you have so many different sports involved. And I, I just think.